Welcome to Core Kinds Today for November 9th, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting. And with it being Saturday, take a look back at the stories from the week before and answer your core cutting related questions. Now, this is my opinion. And if you want to learn more about these stories, I'll put a link to each story in the show notes down below so you can read them for yourself and come up with your own opinions. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, hey, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. It helps us a lot because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV and still watch the shows you enjoy. Well, let's take a look at some of the biggest stories. First, starting off with some of the ones I haven't really covered yet, including T-Mobile will offer home internet for free to 10 million low income households with kids and a $15 a month phone plan if you are a um, low income person and if the T-Mobile Sprint merger goes through. I had a lot of questions about this one. When will this happen? How will you qualify? And more. Because free home internet, even though it is data capped, it is slightly limited, is a great option. I know a lot of people who struggle with home internet. And I also got questions about T-Mobile. Will this be available if you're not low income? I'll get to that in a minute. But T-Mobile says there will be some qualifications on this, probably like the FCC Lifeline internet service where if you have a kid that qualifies for school lunches or uh, Medicaid, Medicare, and that kind of stuff, you may automatically qualify for this. Um, you do need a kid in your home and the plan offers free internet for five years. So it's not like free internet for the rest of your life, but five years of free internet is a pretty good deal. There is a data cap on it that will limit how much data you can use but it is a pretty good deal here. It's 100 gigabytes of data, which doesn't sound like much, but if you live in it at home without any internet, the ability to get 100 gigabytes to surf the web every month, to look up homework, to get the weather, and that kind of stuff, get the news of the day and more, really 100 gigabytes will get you pretty far. May not be a good option for core cutters who want to stream Netflix, Google, and Amazon. You'll burn through that 100 gigabytes pretty quickly in a month. But it is a great option here for core cutters um, who may just use an antenna. I know there's a lot of people out there I talk to who are pure antenna customers. Hey, I got some DVDs, I got an antenna, and that's all I do to maybe get an option there. And also the $15 a month plan is um, going to be open to everybody though. This plan with unlimited talk text, two gigabytes of data, they'll go up by half a gigabyte every month. So before you know it, you're gonna get five, 10 and more gigabytes of data every month. Will be available to everybody, no income limitation on that. The good news here is T-Mobile will be making their home internet service eventually available to everybody. T-Mobile has been rolling out this service. It's in testing right now. I've actually talked to some of our readers who are testing the T-Mobile home internet. They've had high praise for it. May not be the fastest right now, it's capped at 50 down. They say when the 5G service launches, they'll be making that speed much faster. T-Mobile says 5G will be launching in the United States in, in December of this year. So we're gonna keep a close eye on this. Um, more internet competition is great. Bringing internet to more low income families with children is great. Big believer in closing the digital divide, big believer in um, helping those who need it. So I'm very excited about this. I'm even more excited though about the internet service coming out to everybody. The idea that, hey, you know, one of the things I love being a military family for many, many years, my wife being an officer in the army, having to move around all the time, canceling internet, resetting up is a pain. If I have T-Mobile and I just get this brick in my home, I just unplug it from the wall, take it to my new home, plug it back in, I have internet. I am going camping in the RV. I unplug my home internet, put that router in the Wi-Fi uh, um, box into my camper, and now I have internet on the road. With this growing trend of RVers who live in the RV full time and want to be um, always mobile, having internet services like T-Mobile Home Internet could revolutionize that for them and make it even more accessible. I've heard for a lot of people who work from home doing that. I've even met some army people. Hey, I get restationed in another post. I hook up my car to the back of the RV and I drive to that post. I don't have to sell my home. I don't have to buy a new home. I have my RV. So it'd be interesting to see if internet from like T-Mobile that can be anywhere would speed up that trend. 
we'll have to wait and see. But let me know what you think of this. We'll post details as we learn more. T-Mobile says, as soon as the Sprint merger happens, they hope to make that a reality. All right, I, and let me know what you think of all that. I'd love to hear from you. All right, Disney Plus is coming to Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, and more next week when it launches. But I've been getting a lot of questions about when will the app be available for download. Disney has not officially said this, but we have some confirmation that the app won't be available until the actual launch date. Amazon yesterday in their press release about them getting Disney Plus said that they won't have um, Disney Plus's app available until the launch date on Tuesday of next week. So November 12th on Tuesday, the app will be available. We've heard from other sources that that will be true for many app uh, platforms like Roku, Apple TV, and more that the app won't actually go live until the launch date. Now, I know some people have been trying to use a VPN to create an account in the Netherlands to download the app from the Netherlands because it's already available there as part of an early beta test. We we'll caution you that that app may not necessarily work here in the United States fully. I know some people are saying it does, it doesn't. I would wait if you could until the official app release. Um, just be cautious about trying to maybe sideload a version of the um, Netherlands app that's not official because you could run into issues. We've seen that before, so keep that in mind. But as far as I know, Disney Plus won't be coming until Tuesday for the app when it launches in the United States. I would assume sometime after midnight Eastern. Um, Disney has not exactly said like 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, 12.01 a.m. They just haven't given us the details of that. We're trying to find out. All right, one of the other things that was a hot topic is we talked earlier about T-Mobile wanting to offer free home internet to low-income families um, pending the Sprint merger. This week, the FCC re-approved the Sprint T-Mobile merger. The um, Department of Justice has also done it, but there is a lawsuit trying to block it right now. Several states in the District of Columbia have sued to try to block this, and there is a court date in early December. So we may get a good idea what's happening here, but we still may be months out before this merger happens. So when will the T-Mobile Sprint merger happen? Uh, T-Mobile and Sprint don't even know that. I don't think anyone knows that because it's all in the hands of the court right now. Some states like Colorado have dropped out after receiving reassurances that their concerns will be addressed. Other states have joined the lawsuit. We'll wait and see what happens here. Love to know what you think. Some people have said, hey, I'm for I'm against it. I would really love to know why are you for the T-Mobile Sprint merger and why are you against it? I am kind of excited about it. Verizon and let's be honest, Verizon and AT&T are so far ahead right now, especially compared to Sprint, that they're not a major player. I know they're the fourth largest, but they're really not a major competitor. Dish talked about this. They tried to buy them quite a few years ago. And they said after looking at Sprint and the situation was in, they said it didn't make sense for them. It, the troubles they were facing were probably even now worse than they were back then. It didn't make it a good purchase. Having a Sprint T-Mobile merger could very likely compete directly against Verizon and AT&T. Bring in Dish in as a new blood in the industry. And Dish, you know, they, they're not somebody to be counted out. Don't count out Dish here. Uh, I think will not be a bad idea here. Now, of course, I want safeguards in this. I want protections. I like some of the rules the FCC has brought in, requirements to bring 5G to rural America and more uh, that I really like. I think it's not a bad idea, but I do say that with caution. As always, everything sounds great at first, but just because T-Mobile and Sprint merges won't necessarily even make them on par with Verizon AT&T, though I do think it will revolutionize the wireless industry and maybe force Verizon AT&T to be much more aggressive in how they offer plans and in the promotions and their customer service and more. So that's what I'm excited about with it. You know, shaking up isn't necessarily a bad thing. So let me know what you think. A lot of people ask what I think. That's what I think. All right, here's a hot topic that I've been getting a lot of questions about. YouTube TV has delayed the addition of PBS and PBS Kids for a few more weeks. If you remember, it was supposed to go live last Monday, and that's what several PBS stations had confirmed to Core Cars News and many of our readers. 
only for just before it to happen to have several of them say, hey, YouTube uh, TV and PBS have agreed to delay this. We want to make sure that this rolls out correctly. They haven't said when. And PBS has been going around PBS stations saying, hey, let's not talk about this. We don't want to promise it will happen on this date and then not have it happen. When you deal with technical things, sometimes these things are out of your control. You can't really say, hey, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, I guarantee you will be ready. With something this big that has a lot of moving parts, a lot of little independent PBS stations, you can't always control what will happen in this. Now, PBS has said they still intend to launch by the end of 2020, but does a few more weeks mean Thanksgiving? Does a few more weeks mean Christmas? I don't know that. I don't even think PBS knows that. My sources say there is no firm date, though there's some ideas being batted around. We'll have to keep a close eye on that. So if you're looking for an exact date for when PBS will come, I don't know. I will let you know as soon as I know. If you hear anything, go to corecardsnews.com, click on the Contact Us button, send us an email. I would really appreciate any information you see. If it's a tweet, if you talk to anybody at PBS, let me know. Speaking of YouTube TV, a great deal that you probably want to check out is um, YouTube TV is offering a two-week free trial, typically a week or less. They've had that free trial change over time. It's been as much as a month, as short as five days before. But YouTube TV tweeted recently back on the 4th that, hey, anybody looking for a new service? Clearly pointing to um, PlayStation View shutting down here in January. And they said now um, to entice people to come to YouTube TV, not just from PlayStation View, but from anywhere, they're gonna offer a two week free trial. This is a limited time deal. So if you've been thinking about trying out YouTube TV, this may be a great time to do it. I can't guarantee how long this uh, two week free trial will be available for, but the time I'm recording this, which is yesterday from when you're watching this, it was still available. All right, and last story up of the day, I believe, is Netflix is ending support for older Rokus, Vizio TVs, and Samsung Smart TVs. Netflix has been going around and older versions of their app on older TVs and older Rokus. Now we're talking like Rokus made from 2011 and earlier, so very early generation Roku players, will begin discontinued on December 1st. Netflix says, quote, this is because of technical limitations. What exactly that is, I don't know. But when you're trying to support, a, you know, think about it, that's like an iPhone 3. Um, G, that's a very old, or 3S, or wherever it was, one of those early iPhones. Um, try to put a modern um, operating system on that. Try to put a, a, um, an iPhone X um, program on that older one. Some of the more advanced ones won't work. And it sounds like Netflix is saying, hey, we have all this legacy um, apps out here that probably not a lot of people use. There's probably not a lot of Roku um, X, you know, Roku, uh, HDs, which was the very first Roku I ever owned that got me into core cutting, still in action right now. I know there's a few out there, but the vast majority of them are no longer being used. And it seems that um, Netflix is saying, hey, it costs us money to maintain this, it's limiting our ability to move forward, so we're going to drop it. Unfortunately, um, that may mean you're out of luck. How do you know if your TV or your Roku is in that list? When you launch the Netflix app on it, it will bring up a big warning that will say, hey, on December 1st, just a reminder, this app will stop working. So keep that in mind um, if you're interested in finding out if your Roku is one of the ones affected or your smart TV from Vizio or Samsung and more. So that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. It's been a busy, busy weekend here at Core Cars News. Do you have a story you want us to check out or look into? Leave us a comment, send us an email, and let me know what do you think of these stories? What do you think was maybe the biggest news from the past week? Was it some of the Disney Plus news coming to Fire TV or the others? Was it maybe Dish gaining subscribers for the first time as Sling TV grow faster than Dish lost subscribers for the first time ever as far as we know? So I'd love to hear from you. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Stay warm. It's very cold down here in Texas, and I'll see you on Monday. Thanks, everybody. Take care.